Hey guys, welcome back to the channel Everyday Carry for Everyday Guy. And as you can see, there are two rather hideous faces on the screen right now. Um, this is James, the owner of probably SA's top, maybe top two, top three most popular holster company right now, Southwest Holsters. We're going to be doing an EDC Q&A with him. Um, I posted a, a, a question on Facebook if there's anyone who wanted to ask anything of James and we were quite a few interesting questions which he has not seen yet so this should be interesting but before we do that we're going to do five questions right and this is like a competition style thing where you win nothing but you could end up being hated by the entire city of the country so I mean no pressure. James, five questions you can only answer with one word and therefore can't explain yourself right regarding okay. holsters uh, and EDC. Okay. Question number one, for concealment and comfort, besides the holster, would you recommend a belt, pants, or cover garment? Belt. Okay. Question number two, your opinion on the best clip to use, J-clip, soft loop, foamy, C-clip. Get ready for the eight. Hmm. Only one word, so you can't explain yourself. <laughs> foamy. Foamy, okay. I'm going, for I'm going for foamy. Okay. You you also obviously you don't like social media. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for bigger guys, uh three o'clock or appendix inside the waistband? Sorry, when you say bigger guys, you mean guys with bellies? Correct. Uh, it has to be three. It has to be three. Three o'clock. Okay. Viper or Rattler? See, <laughs> <laughs> um, Rattler. Rattler. Okay. And then the last and possibly the most important question, a question that will tell you everything you need to know about a human being before you've ever met that person. Out of these three, Glock, CZ, or SIG, I suggest you close your Instagram account and all other social media accounts after you answer this question. How <laughs> you answered in one word, Ryan? Glock, CZ. Like, can I just can I answer in two in two important parts? Striker fired Glock, hammer fired SIG. Striker fired Glock, hammer fired SIG. Yes. And see if it doesn't make the cut. Hooey. No. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, if you could. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm a Glock fanboy. <laughs> I own Glocks. Glocks are what I do. But the best, the best all round handgun in the world, unarguably for EDC carry, would be a 229 Legion. That would be the best handgun there is you could humanly carry on your person. And if you're going to go down the line of a P07 or a P09 even coming in the remote stratosphere of that firearm, then no, it is. I've got nothing against P07s. I would just like to state at this point that these views are the, are the views of uh, Chamber South is also and not <laughs> the views of EDC with EDG. <laughs> okay, let's get to the, the, the actual questions. So I'm going to, I mean, we both can answer them, right? Um, some of them I think would be directed at you and I think a lot of them would want your views on it. Um, so a guy called Tyden Timothy Art, first question. Mm -hmm. I know that Glock 9, Glock 17, 19 and the CZPO series pistols are the most popular purchases in South Africa. Uh, mm -hmm. I also understand that molds aren't cheap, uh, but mm -hmm. is there any chance for some Smith & Wesson MNP style holsters in the future as they seem to be finding a following in the South African market. That one I'm going to leave straight to you because I have no saying in it. Right, so Glock 19 is the biggest seller in the country. It's the biggest seller everywhere in the world. It's got nothing to do with the country, um, unarguably. They're just the figures coming out of the Glock factory is mental at the moment. Um, but Glock 17 is actually not, to answer that part of the question, Glock 17 is actually not a, a, a very big carry pistol. If anything, straight after the 19, it's probably the 43. 
out of the Glock series pistols. Not many people carry. Richie Kwan carries a 17 still. A good friend of mine who we, everyone should know who's on this channel. Um, not many people carry them anymore. Um, then it's fo closely followed by PO7 in this country. Um, m and stuff in the future, yes. So as a company, we're always going to be looking to expand. Okay. It's always going to be a case of we're always going to try and have more and more. But the expansion that's happening at the moment, the molds are 400 odd dollars each. Okay. It's a lot of money. So from, and, and as myself, I've done four MMP series, not MMP series, MMP 2.0s and stuff. I've done a couple of shields because I own an MMP shield. Um, but I've done probably four or five, whereas I've done thousands of Glock 19s. So for me to warrant spending $400 when there's other things I need to spend the money on, for now, I would say no. Um, in future, a hundred percent. It will probably be the first. It will probably be the first thing I don't buy straight away. So, out of all my molds that are going to be live straight away on the website and retailers, the first mold to closely follow up will be an MMP series of some sort. The only issue I have with MMP, same as I had nineteen eleven. I'd love to do a nineteen eleven. Um, MMP make a three point two five. They make a four inch. They make a four point two five. They make. They make all these hot, they don't make it easy like Glock, 19, 17, 26, 43, done, done. Do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. piss easy, or well, 34 if you want to go upwards, but no one, actually I have got one that carries a 34. But, um, so for me, I'd have to go and do a bit more research within retailers to see what they are selling here. Because I know there's only actually a couple of people that are selling MP series stuff. Um, so yeah, so it will probably be one of the first things I do after the stuff that I'm going to start with in the expansion. That's the answer to the question. Okay, cool. Okay, next question. Fabian Sipkins, I understand the concept of rather have and don't need than need mm. and don't have. But how mm. often as an EDC person, sorry, how often has an EDC person needed a holster and spare mag when carrying high capacity firearms. So I would, I just want to, can, can I start off and then you can also add your bit. Yeah, in okay, so from my point of view on that, right, my, my reason behind carrying a spare mag is, I would say it's twofold. It's not because I'm, because I think I'm going to reach capacity in mag A. Let's say mag A is the mag in the firearm, right? And mm. Mag B is the mag in the spare mag carrier. My, mm. my my actual primary reason for carrying a spare mag is not that I think I'm going to reach capacity uh, of Mag A, is that I think I might have a malfunction in Mag A, and it's easier mm. to go to a to a separate mag, right? Yeah. And so and so that is why I carry uh, spare mags. And to be fair, the malfunctions I've had uh, on the range, my natural instinct is always um, reload. Yes, so so and maybe I'm, I might be building in a a, a a negative skill, but I find I find going for a a speed reload is a more sure of an answer than doing a a immediate action or like a tap rack, because well, speed, I think if you get yeah, go on a speed reload um, is in effect a tap rack, but you are eliminating the possibility of the mag being the fault because you're replacing that mag with a new mag. You with me? Yeah. So, so that's my mentality around carrying a spare mag. That's yeah. my thoughts on it. Yeah, agreed and disagreed depending on what firearm you're carrying. I mean, I shoot several thousand rounds a month. Um, as long as you shoot in high grade factory ammo, you're very rarely going to have a malfunction. If you're carrying, this is another very valid point that should be brought up. If you're carrying hollow points, all right, if I buy a box of hollow, hollow points, I shoot half of the box. So I only have enough left to fill a magazine. I think a lot of people aren't doing that because of the financial reason. But it's all very well for me going, cool, I'm going to spend a thousand round on ammo. Okay. I'm going to load up all my mags, but never shoot it. 
but now you've spent 10 grand on a handgun, you spent X amount on shooting at the range, you spent X amount on training if you train, and then your gun doesn't fucking work because it doesn't feed the bloody thing in the, in the mag. Yeah. So personally, always shoot your ammo. And my honest opinion is, I mean, I'm, I'm classed as a pretty decent shooter out there. I'm not the best, I'm not the worst. Um, but when you're running in and around a fucking vehicle, and you start shooting at multiple targets, 15 rounds doesn't last very long, especially if you're not hitting them in the face. Yeah. Because yeah. the realistic of it is if you're moving and shooting, and the, the, the question depicts how often you're ever going to need it. Maybe only once in your life. But if it's that once in your life where you've got three dudes, you're moving, you're shooting, it's the, it's the only important. one time in your life you need it. Yeah. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, like we said earlier on, Viper versus Rattler, when you asked me at the beginning. Funnily enough, I normally carry a Viper when I'm allowed a handgun. I normally carry a Viper with a spare mag on my side, but I always have a spare mag, okay? If I'm going places and cars that I'm going to be playing around, I have a happy stick fully loaded up with hollow points on, on, a, on, on the, I've got a little, I made a little holder for it in my door pocket. Because the second I open that door, that's what I'm reaching for. I'm not even going to go to my spare mag. I'm going to go happy stick because then I don't have to worry about doing anything else. So, and as I said, when you shoot at the range, it's all very well. Uh, boom, boom. Two shots, middle of the head. Yay. Cool. But go and see JC and Bravo uh, at Bravo Tactical Africa. Get him hitting you with a pool noodle while you're running around a vehicle and sweating your tits off and you're... Yeah. And those guys, those e even still, those targets aren't moving. Mm. Therefore, and I still miss. And I, as I said, I'm a pretty proficient shooter. So if you're not a proficient shooter and you need it once in your life, I'd rather have a spare mag. Yeah. Cool. You tap, you double tap the dude in the face. It's over a game set and match. Sweet. Well done. What, but how much damage is that having that spare mag on you do? Yeah. I mean, this thing's not big, you know? This is a Viper and that's a Rattler. It's, it's, not, it's not a great bit of big, you know what I mean? It's not a big amount of difference for the value. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I've got to say something. Mm. This is a Rattler. No, no. <laughs> oh, yes it is. We're not going to get into the conversation <laughs> about this holster. <laughs> I had to bring so it Ryan up. Send, yeah, Ryan sends me up host uh, lights that I've never seen before. Make me a holster for this, James. <laughs> so I've been making holsters for three, two, two and a half, three years now, and only one holster's ever taken over two hours. One holster's ever taken over three hours, and it's that godforsaken thing that you see him carrying around every day because um, I couldn't get it to mold properly. So. If you see that holster to keep on popping up in the video, it's because it's an ongoing joke between me and Ryan, and I hate the bloody thing. <clears throat> okay, so next question. I think we, we covered Fabian's question. Yes. Martin Berger, and there are quite a few people who um, said they agree with this question, okay? Okay. Uh, the question starts off 140 kilograms plus, right? Uh, and can't find a holster or position. I understand some discomfort, but to have zero discomfort at all stages is a huge issue. Best so far was a soft, large holster face for the clock. Uh, might as well not wear the firearm. Uh, outside the waistband prints too much. Uh, is there uh, some help in design maybe for guys like us? My weapon is a SIG SP2022. So mm. I just want to say, um, I look, okay, so in the most respectful way possible, and I do mean this respectful, so respectfully, um, it's hard for me to fully assist someone who is not of a similar body shape to my own, because I, I can't tell, right? I, I mean, I have the body I have, right? Um, I can tell you that carrying a holster, right, is not comfortable in the, in the, in the same sense of what we think comfort is. Carrying yes. a holster is not, is not comfortable. It's never super comfortable to where I think, wow, I could, I could like, this is, this is way, it's, I've never ever thought this holster is so it's comfortable. It's not a pair of socks. 
Yes, yeah. I've never ever thought this last is so comfortable. I would rather wear it than not wear it. Okay. Mm. But um, two things I have found. The first three or four days I wear Alst, the, first, the only thing I really look for is concealment. Can I, concealment and access to the firearm. Um, yes. And I discovered this quite a while ago. It takes time for your body to adjust because I wear so many different kinds of Alsters. Like mm. today it's a PL Mini, tomorrow it's a PL Pro, the next day it's a Opsman um, Fast, Fast 401. There's so, <laughs> there's so many different kinds of Alsters, different sizes, different shapes that I've realized where putting on a holster in the shop and thinking, oh, that's uncomfortable. That's not a proper frame of reference. Um, mm. when, I, when I first got the Opsman holster, I thought, oh, this, this thing is like super uncomfortable. Um, but it was it concealed really well. And I stuck with it, stuck with it to a point now where I naturally know how to move in the holster, where to put the holster, how to position the holster to where it's super comfortable. I can do everything I would do without the holster on to a degree. I mean, you have to for you are going to forego mm-hmm. certain things, um, and and like I said, a, a big a holster, an appendix holster becomes more comfortable as you wear it, mm-hmm. especially if you're not coming from appendix. If you're coming from either yeah. not carrying or carrying three o'clock or outside the waistband, um, <sighs> it, it's something you- that takes time. Also, I, but before we started, you had a, you had an outside the waistband holster. Now, I, I'm not an outside the waistband kind of guy. I, 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 I again don't have the physique for the outside the waistband setup, right? But I do see bigger guys running outside the waistband because they have the belly and it's sort of the t-shirts go over, you know, um, over the sides of the waistline. Um, mm. especially if it's one of those pancake style ulcers that you have that, that, that really hug the body, that type situation. I mean, that sucker. Like I don't ignore these, by the way, guys, these don't, these aren't around anymore. This is one of my personal, this is my, when I was carrying this with my backup gun, this was a, a Smith and Wesson shield used to wear it on the outside of the waistband in the winter. I could quite happily hide it on my side while I was carrying my Glock appendix. Um, Yes, 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 and no. Right. So there's a reason that you don't see bankers walking around in slippers. Because slippers are far more uncomfortable than shitty fucking leather shoes that the bankers wear. But there's a tool for every job. Do you know what I mean? Um, So as an analogy, it wasn't the best one. But a pair of slippers is far more comfy. Why not wear them out? Because they don't do the job. Yeah. So... For me, look, I again, like yourself, I find it very hard. I can only do it in a professional manner that I've seen enough and I've been around enough people. I made holsters for me. This whole Southwest holster started. I made them for me. Okay. This shit is stuff that I like. Okay. It's what I wear. I don't make stuff because it's for someone else. I make stuff for me and it just tends to work for most people. Now, If you're a big dude, the best option is an outside the waistband. Like if you can't get along. So the problem is with those nylon, I don't, what did gun did he say he had? Uh, SP2022. Okay, so it's hammer fire double action. So it doesn't make a difference about really safety. You could almost just fucking Mexican that. But those nylon, what I was trying to get as is the nylon, those nylon things aren't safe. But it doesn't make a difference because it's a, First trigger pull is going to be eight, nine pounds. It's near enough impossible to go off in your pants. So, um, look, try outside the waistband. If you can't get on with outside the waistband, um, like Ryan said, you're just going to have to suck it up until you find something that works for you. Like, I don't know what holster companies you used. I don't know what you've tried. By all means, give me a, get me on the blower. If it means FaceTiming so I can see your size and kind of figure out what would what wouldn't suit you, then I can do it. Do you know what I mean? Um, nine and a half times out of ten, unless I don't like you, and if I don't like you, it doesn't matter about business. Nine and a half times out of ten, I will try and help someone to the best of their abilities um, and can give them a personal opinion. Yeah. But I've made thousands of holsters so far, two people in my life, two I haven't been able to make happy. Nothing to do with the product. The product's absolutely fine. You can't, 
you know, you can't please everyone. And I can't, as I said, carrying a firearm, what I would actually suggest, if you actually wanted to go full spectrum, what's the best scenario I could do? Buy a SIG P365 XL, something a lot smaller. That's going to take up a lot less room. I mean, I can chuck this on my waistband because this is for an MMP shield. This is for my one, as I said earlier on. And it's fucking minute. You know, it's hand print size. Anyone can get rid of that. Okay. And wear that in summer with a pair of shorts and a t-shirt and you can, you can, it disappears because it's sat so close to my side. Yeah. So in an ideal world, get rid of a big hefty firearm because A, that's going to make your life harder. B, how often are you ever going to have to use it? But you're better off, like we have saying earlier on, having it on you than not having the of it. And the new P365 is a brilliant gun. The P365 XL, which is just a little bit bigger if you've got more manly hands, is a freaking, it's the best striker polymer, polymer fire gun on the market at the moment. Hands down, no question. It's not even, a, it's not even remotely close. Glock 19 is the best all-round firearm, but the best striker-fired polymer pistol on the market right now, in my personal opinion, is a P365 XL. It's amazing. It's epic. And it's tiny. Yeah. I could carry two of them. I could make a rattler, one this side, one this side, and have two. I'm actually going to do it at some point in the future. <laughs> I've done it before. I've done it with my Glock. No, I've got. A, I've actually got a holster for my Glock 19 and MP shield, so I can dual wield. Um, anyway, so um, so I think that would, be, honest opinion, is change down to a smaller firearm. Either go outside the waistband or just suck it up and learn to carry somewhere. Yeah. Whether it's two, three, appendix, four, five. But a smaller frame firearm is going to be inherently easier to carry, but inherently harder to shoot. Yeah. I also think just to finish off on that, a lot of people who watch my videos think that because I don't complain about it, that all my holsters are as comfortable as putting on a pair of socks. It's not yeah. the case. I'm just, I, I've just become okay with that level custom. of, yes, accustomed to that level of, of discomfort because I know it brings me the ability to carry a firearm. So I just have to live with it. I, I have my firearm licenses because I'm a foreign national are so intermittent. I go from carrying a firearm all year to not carrying a firearm for six months to getting a license finally again. And those first two weeks, I'm like, oh, fuck, this sucks. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, and then you just forget about it. As I said, exactly. you know, you really have to commit to it. Yeah. Okay. Next question. Clive uh, Bitteridge. Hi, uh, is there any benefit to having a high contrast color like orange or neon green on it? on the inside of your Kydex uh, appendix holster, for example, will you be able to identify foreign objects easier while reholstering? A, it looks cool as shit, but B, I've never even thought about that. And theoretically, yes. The, yeah, I that, don't know. That, theoretically, yeah. you might, like I've, it's never even crossed my mind. The reason I do them, dude, is because they look cool as shit when they're on your bedside table. Yeah. But theoretically, Yes. I mean, so, this is a lighter colour. That's yeah. easier to see in there than a darker colour. So if that was like <laughs> neon green yeah. or orange, then yeah, in, I guess. In but, principle, in principle, I would say yes. I've also never, ever really thought about that. No, and I think, I think, look, the truth of it is it doesn't matter. If you look down an object, you can see it's clear. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't think color makes a difference. Um, I think if I stuff something in here, you know what I mean? If I do this, you know, uh, there, and then I stuff this in there, you can clearly see that's obstructed. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like it's, it's, I think it's, that's common sense stuff. Um, but in theory, I will look into it. <laughs> okay. Cool. Next question. Mohammed Fahim Suleiman. I'm hoping I'm saying all that correctly. Would it mm -hmm. be possible to perhaps make a video of James making one of his Kydex holsters? Mm. I don't, mm. So I so, okay. So from my side, uh, if you're asking, would I be up for it? Um, James and I are in different cities. Um, so if I was where he was. Uh, from my side, I would be up for it 
But I don't know if James wants to give away his after secrets, if there are any after secrets. Yeah, so I'm I was we were, I'm in an hour and about doing this not long ago. Hanke was gonna do something from Bravo Tactical. Um and yes, I am sat on the floor, guys, which is more comfortable. Um so there's certain parts of holster making that's kind of like hard to find. Like hard, if you're looking for it, you can find it some places, and some of it you just can't full stop. So yes and no. I would be open to the process kind of, yeah. like the simple stuff, like sanding, and like you've seen on my Instagram story today, you see how I drew it and stuff. Yeah. But you're never gonna get how long I can leave my Kydex in for, you're never gonna get my temperature, you're never gonna get how I do certain things. Yeah, yeah. Um, they're almost trade secrets that you can find some, most of it. Other parts I have to beg and borrow and steal from holster makers in America and ring them up and say, dude, <laughs> how do you do this? And because I'm in a different country, luckily they're really nice and they tell me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, yes. Yeah, yes, I know. <laughs> like, let, let's leave it on maybe. Maybe. Okay. Um, next question is from Alan Victor. What is the most comfortable holster configuration appendix inside the waistband for a guy with a bit of a beer belly? So, honest opinion. I'm going to see what Ryan thinks of this. A rattler for two reasons. First of all, so this is mine. So ignore the fact that this sweat guard would normally be here. I cut, I actually run no sweat guard or really low sweat guards because I don't care about them. Um, I'd rather have a nice rounded firearm. I keep on looking at this little camera here when I'm going to be looking here. Um, I'd rather have a firearm here than a piece of Kydex. So um, the reason being my answer for this you don't have one thing stabbing you in the belly. The kind of belly kind of gets all of this. So when ordering a rattler, what I would suggest is say, James, can you make me a mid, mid sweat guard and a low sweat guard or mid sweat guard on on uh, this, the mag side and on the rear side? Um, for the reason that your belly's going to be sat on a nice, comfortable firearm and a nice, comfy end of a magazine rather than on some Kydex. Um, and it spreads it out rather than like it's very hard to explain but so, rather than having the belly just do that it's kind of got the whole thing so here's my view on belly comfort right and i've and i've got this question a lot and i've spoken to a few of my friends who are a bit bigger um bigger guys i think would be more comfortable with bigger appendix holsters because if you think about it this way if you've got a super small holster, right, that is a small surface area, okay? Mm. Now, the smaller the surface area, the greater its discomfort in impact. Think about it this way. Imagine carrying a, um, imagine someone took a pin and faced yeah. it into your belly, right? Versus imagine someone took a round cup, right? Yeah. That's the deal. So, so because yeah. because there's a smaller surface area, the pin will press in further to a point of breaks the skin. Similarly, with a smaller holster, the smaller holster will be more uncomfortable because it's a press. I, in I further. agree. I you know what I'm saying. So, I would yes. I would agree. Um, Rattler over over Viper. Yes. Cool. Um, Reynard de Kock, are all your holsters optic ready? Mm, not right now. Right now, I always say to people, let me know if you've got an optic and let me know what optic because Sightmark, the Trigicon SRO, certain things don't work with my optic ready stuff that is actually meant to be optic ready. Me and Ryan had this problem actually with his Sightmark originally. Um, they will be. When the expansion is done, so by December, once the website's live and once you can order everything off the website, then it will be. It will be ready um, and it will all be optic ready, hopefully. But yes, so if you're going to order Rattler at the moment, it's custom anyway. So you're going to be on the phone to me or you're going to be on the phone to Ryan. Um, and you're going to say, Ryan, I have a Glock 19 with a Trigicon SRO. Can you make sure James knows? 
and Ryan will relay that message to me, or you will relay that message to me, and I will make it so. Okay. Um, Lorenzo Moodley. Sig P365 with a Balder Mini. Is it in the works, or is it going to happen once I send you the Balder Mini? No, it won't be. A, it'll be a custom. That'll stay custom. Not unless everyone that owns a 365 in this country decides to put a Balder Mini on it, at which point then I will get a, a, a mold for it. But no. Most people who carry those subcompact firearms don't put lights on them. Yeah. Um, because it kind of deflates the point of having a subcompact firearm. You start turning your holster from that big there, see, so just nice and nothing, to that big. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like it's a, you, and when you do that in a three, I mean, a 360, I mean, this is a mag holder. It's about the size of a 365 holster it's ridiculous they're tiny they're yeah. pathetic yeah. um i almost feel bad charging what i charge for them so um yeah no i will do it custom when we get the boulder mini up to me and yeah we'll, we'll i'll do it custom for you it's not a problem but um it's not going to be something that's going to be on the website okay um and then mohammed fame salem i feel like he asked this question already um so he's asking, are all South Wales optic and supply side sites ready? So the, the answered question is, they can be. You just have to let James know at this point, and he will make yeah. them. And then we've got a few questions, a few inboxes from people who prefer to remain anonymous. I don't know why, but um, so anonymous. Sorry, let me just get that. Uh, first question is, are you okay or are you comfortable to make light bearing holsters if the customer is willing to send you their light? And are there any you refuse to make for? Now, I yes, can tell. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, I want to answer that question by saying uh, that James makes the best, and I can confirm this, and I, and I say this without fear of it not being true. He makes the best Opsman Fast 401 holster <laughs> in the whole of South Africa. I know Some that because there's the only <laughs> one. <laughs> so, so if you want the Opsman Fast 401, uh, I will leave James' uh, social media links down below. All you have to do is continuously bug him all the time and he will make you the best weapon or shall I say full-size weapon like holster you've ever stuck in your pants. But I'll now let him answer. Are there any lights that you, you, even if the client is willing to send them to you, that you would absolutely refuse to make a roster for? No, but there is lights I'm going to charge more for because they're more work. Um, what's the name of that light company? V Viridian. That stuff. The Viridian holsters are going to be like 500 grand more. End of story. I don't like, it's just it. Yeah. Guys, how I base my holster prices is how, I, I'm, I'm a tattoo artist by trade, okay? I own a tattoo shop, okay? I can go downstairs and earn a thousand rand an hour tattooing and don't have to do this anymore. I, everything for me, I was always taught the one thing you can't buy back in life is time. So if you're using my time, it's got to be valued. Okay, so how I value a holster is how much time it takes me. Ryan took me three hours. If Ryan wasn't my friend, that holster, it got to a point with that Opsman holster where I actually rang him and said, I'm done, I'm not doing it. And then I was like, I'm halfway through trying to give it that one more go. Because you don't, don't realize the amount of work. When I've got nice blockouts and stuff that already exist that I can use over and over again. So this is a... Block 19 with a PL2. It's not, this is easy, all right? But when you've got to create that on something, that tunnel for that light to run down, when you've got to create that on something that is an odd shape and blah, 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 blah there's a lot that goes wrong real quick. Um, hence why people like Lucas from T-Rex Arms, 
QVO, blah, 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 whoever else it may be, do not do custom stuff. They don't do it because it ain't worth their time. Um, it might get to a point where it won't be worth my time. I'm not going to lie about it. In the future, there's going to, you know, there'll be very few people that will be able to send me a light and I'll make a holster for it. Um, for now, no, I will do every light. But if you have a Viridian, chuck it in the bin and go buy yourself an O-Light because you're going to save 500 bucks on your holster and you've got a better light. <laughs> okay, next question. Um, when will... Sorry. Yep. When will we see or will we ever see your holsters in gun stores? Because the person who sent it likes to get the feel, a touch, a look, a stick in the pants to feel what it feels like. Do you foresee us ever seeing your holsters in gun stores around the country? So, Southwest Holsters is going to... I want to wear my glasses, but I'm kind of reflective. Um, hold on. Uh, whoop. Less reflective. <laughs> anyway, so Southwest Holsters is going through an expansion. So how the company started, it was me making gun holsters for myself because in my opinion, I couldn't find a holster that I was happy with in this country. Now, there is one or two guys that I fully rate in this country. Um, and as I said, I'm not here to talk about other companies. I don't. People do what they want to do. I love them for it. Um, McDonald's don't care about Burger King and Burger King don't care about McDonald's. So the answer to the question, going off topic a bit. So I started making holsters for me. Okay, my gear really hasn't been upgraded since. It's just become a full-time job. I do not tattoo anymore. I have not got the time. I go into work at nine o'clock in the morning and I make holsters till five o'clock at night. So, and I've got a 10 to 14 day lead time. Um, you know, and for me as a business, I mean, I've just had a baby as well, so it's also very important for me to now have family time. You know, I need days off. Um, and for me as a business, it's also, my name's out there now, due to people like you and JC and people. And be, let's get this clear, guys. Ryan, when, when this first started, I sent Ryan a holster and I said, you say what the hell you want about it. All right. After that, Ryan's paid. Ryan paid for that Opsman holster. All right, he might get a small discount, but we do business together, so whatever. But he doesn't rate my shit because he gets stuff free. He can have any holster he wants from any pretty much any company in this country. So let's get that out of the way. Same as JC and Heinke. They don't, they, they're sponsored because I believe in what they're doing. I believe in training and I believe in the prosperity of making a non-dangerous man a dangerous man. Um, so for me now it's got to a point in a business whereby my name is out there and it only makes logical sense to chuck a ton of money into the company but as i said it involves a lot of money and a lot of time and a lot of effort learning new production ways and new values um, and i don't want to lose what i created in my holsters you know it's they're not perfect i kind of like it not every every single one's slightly different in a tiny smidgen kind of way. Um, and I like it. Um, so creating a mold to make this is a long process in itself. Um, and then obviously I've got to get made for each firearm. But the answer to your question is yes. By December in Johannesburg, every single gun, major gun store will have my shit in. Um, probably by... I'm actually going Johannesburg, Durban, Cape Town, eventually. So what's going to happen because I've, Ryan's got access to my stuff anyway. So he's got Cape Town kind of covered in a, in a fashionable way there. And I'm going to have a website. Um, but please, guys, if you're with Ryan and you know Ryan and you're watching Ryan, please always order it through him. Um, not through my website support you guys everyone's got to make some money in this world um yeah so yes is the answer to the question depending on where you are in the country if you're in johannesburg it will be by december if you're in durban it will be i'm hoping early mid mid next year and then cape town eventually i'll probably actually just send stock to ryan and then maybe one gunshot so yeah 
Okay, last question. Is I'm going to get this question. It's quite a complicated question. Uh, okay, mm -hmm. so Southwest Holsters, and then he names a few other Holster companies, which I'm not going to name because we're not talking yep. about other Holster companies, um, yep. are rated amongst the best in the country. Is it your goal to be the is it your goal to be the best holster manufacturer in South Africa and then expand and do you speak to and get to, do do holster manufacturers speak to and get along with other holster manufacturers considering you are all in competition? And I think I think I want to expand no. on that question. Um, no. so, so you can answer so okay. So which part is no? Pardon? Which part no, I is said, go. Oh, go. No, no. I want to expand on that question. Um, I think maybe, and this is a good question to probably end off on because it's going to give you a nice piece to end off on. Obviously, we know worldwide, um, if we're looking at it globally, the, the major players in the Ulster world are probably T-Rex, Tier 1, uh, Works, QVO, um, and then from a financial standpoint, Bravo Concealment. I think they've got one of the best financial models. Um, mm, I'm as far as saying Lucas is probably earning more money than him, but yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. I think so as well. Do you foresee yourself uh, being on their level, both locally right. and internationally? So to answer the question, do I get on with local manufacturers? My boy owns Dave, uh, Daniel's Holsters. See him all the time. Pav, who owns Reaper, see him all the time. Uh, Matthew from Quantum Carry, he's down your end. We chat every now and then. As I said to you earlier on, Guy, I never, I, I, same as the tattoo industry, my apprentice used to come to me and show me other people's work, okay? And I used to look at my apprentice and said, while you're judging or worrying about his work, you're not improving yourself, okay? I know a couple of the big players in America. I'm lucky in that respect. Um, I've talked to a lot of them. Uh, in fact, I've talked to all of them. It's not any of the big players I've talked to. I know one or two quite well. Um, look, the company was, I never ever in a million years thought it was gonna get to the point where people would consider me the best of something in my country. Okay, I made holsters for me because I wanted to shoot and I wanted a decent holster and I knew I could make something and I wanted something pretty. I'm an artist, like we were saying, I'm an artist by trade. I, I, I'm Gucci AF. I like black multicam stuff. I like multicam stuff. I mean, that's my EDC knife. It's a multicam sheath. Like, I just also knife. There will be a knife being released soon with a collab from a nice host, uh, a nice uh, knife maker in South Africa, local guy. And I design the knife. He's making it. I'm going to design the sheath. Anyway, so that will be released soon. Hopefully soon. I should have it by now, the prototype. But anyway, so look, I aspire to people like Lucas, Lucas especially, and Jared from Tier One. Um, Lucas created something in which it changed the way people view and respect firearms. It's no longer just about a piece of Kydex. This is all very well. This is just good gear. But the reason I'm in this and the, this my passion is because I need this to do what I enjoy. Do you get me? And that was the whole fundamental of why I started the company. Yeah. I needed this that would work for me while I was doing this. Do you get me? So I aspire and like, as I said earlier on a Bravo Tactical, I sponsor them hands down, openly admit it. In fact, JC paid for his last holster, his uh, brushstroke camera one. But, um, so I truly believe in training. I'm I'm very like-minded. Some people call me the South African Lucas. They, with the, I get referred to it quite a lot. And I'm not Lucas. Um, I have the same values and some of the same values as Lucas. I think that we live in a violent country, unlike America. America's a violent country, but on South Africa, it's civil, apart from right now. Um, we have five, six, seven million legal firearms in this country, okay? We live in a violent country. And like Lucas does in America, Lucas 
now is more about training than he is his gear. Everyone knows his gear is good. I don't need to sell it anymore. I'd like to get to that point where I don't need to sell my gear. Yeah. If you're carrying a firearm, you have a Southwest holsters. It's just the standard. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And if the other guys up their shit, cool. I don't care as long as a level of gear is good. I'm not just in this to make money. I'm in it because it's my passion. Pulling a trigger is what I do. Saturday morning, you can find me at Tactical HQ in Johannesburg, and I will have my ear pods in, and I'll be pulling a trigger. And at least once or twice during the week, you will catch me there pulling a trigger. And when I can, I'm running and gunning, kill houses, around cars, at, at courses. I want a South Africa where people, me and Ryan were having this conversation the other day. I said to Ryan, okay, if your wife was getting hijacked in a vehicle and you're not there, who do you want behind her? Do you want Joe Bloggs that shot 30 rounds in the last six months, never done anything tactical in his life? Or do you want JC? Or do you want Heinke? Or do you want me? Or do you want Ryan? Do you want those guys sat behind your missus? Because it would be very quick how the tables would turn yeah. in this country if everyone picked up a little bit of time. If you carry a firearm, it's a responsibility. It's not a responsibility for you because I don't care if you go to jail. But my missus might be in traffic when you start doing this, okay? And I know I ain't going to hit your missus if I start doing this in traffic because I'm a proficient level. So for me, I don't care if you mess up and go to jail. But I do care that if you shoot a bystander or, you know, it's, it's very easy to get good at firearms, guys. People always ask me, how do you do that? How do you shoot like this? How do you do that? How's JC shooting like that? This don't move and it don't go bang. You ain't going to get better. So I want to get to a point where com the company is, I'd like to be able to put back in. I said this to Ryan. I said this to Heinke, I rang Heinke the other day, we had a long conversation. If the company goes where it's projected to go, I will spend a lot more time. I will open a YouTube channel dedicated to training, handling, gear, et cetera, et cetera, in and around vehicles, rather than just like snippets of stuff, I'm gonna go into a bit more detail. I'm also hoping and planning that I make enough money that I can put money back in. So say I meet a guy that really wants to get in it, but he just hasn't got the money but I feel like he's got the mindset and he's got the dedication because I see him pulling the trigger as much as he humanly can. I'll put him in a course with Heinke. I'll put him in a course with the deployment concept. And that's another company we haven't even talked about. I want to start doing medical gear. I want to do body armor. You know, I want to do the stuff that's needed as an edc -er to survive in this world. Yeah. Um, a lot of people don't, a lot of people don't respect the fact that if you're carrying a firearm, how many guys can you go, oh, can you stop an arterial bleed though? Mm. Yeah, you can shoot, but can you stop an arterial bleed? Yeah. And they go, oh, we need to. Well, we all carry a firearm for one simple purpose. We don't carry it because it's cool. Some people do. We don't carry it because it's cool. We don't carry it because it's fun. We've discussed the fact that it's far more uncomfortable. It's definitely more expensive. You're definitely more on edge. Why do we carry it? protect the lives of me, my family, my loved ones, or anyone around me. So inevitably, if you need to use that firearm and you use two magazines, because one wasn't enough, bullets have started flying. Now your four-year-old child that's in the back of the car gets hit, only in the arm, nothing serious, but she's bleeding. How many people carry a tourniquet? I'm never more than a meter away from one. I've got one around me at any one point when I'm out and about. And I think it's very important. If you're in Johannesburg or any of South Africa, go check out Deployment Concepts. You'll see them all over my Instagram all the time. Lovely bunch of guys, work with a lot of special dudes around the world from Poland to special forces in Germany and all sorts. These guys learn from combat medics and special forces units what really happens when people get shot. And it isn't pretty. So, you know, I, it, I, it's not just about gear for me. It's about a whole community and that's what I kind of want to build and that's why I like Lucas you know um Jared's cool he's into his trick shots and does all his shit do you know what I mean he's a sound guy and his company's amazing and I love his holsters I mean basically my rattler is based on a tier one let's be simple yeah but it's because he does it well simple
You can't reinvent the wheel, okay? But you can bring the wheel to a different country that hasn't got a wheel. Yeah. So, yes, I want to be, I will expand to the American market. I get guys asking me, I had a Miami SWAT team asking for my gear the other day, which was really cool. But I just haven't got the infrastructure to be doing it at the moment. Eventually I will, hopefully by end of next year, once the company's grown and we've kind of taken over a bit and we're doing gear. Um, and then I send, start sending stuff out to America to vendors. I've got people in mind who want my stuff and want to vendor it. But yeah, I'd like, look, you never, I'd never want to be the biggest at something because the problem is once you're on top, you just got to I do it. I want to, I want to be big enough where I can enjoy a little bit. I've worked so hard for two years to build the company to where it is. Um, I've worked nine till five grinding away. My fingers are burnt. My hands are cut to shit. Um, oh, it's about time that I can put a bit more into why for two years I made good gear so people could do this. Now, I think it's more important to focus on the next bit is how to do this, where should we do this, what happens when this goes wrong, you know, and get people educated. I said to Ryan, I said, if, if every single street in Johannesburg had one of me on and had a Ryan on, or had a JC on, or had a Heinker on, all of a sudden the tables would flip in this country overnight. Yeah, yeah. Overnight, South Africa's rate because Joe Bloggs, who's going out for a hijacking, didn't make it back in. And his mate goes, did you hear he got clapped? Three days later, he gets clapped. You know, it's very easy to turn the tables on people. What are your You've thoughts seven on this, though? Guns. Yeah, Go th this, this is my thing. I think we have enough gun owners in this country right now to where mm -hmm. if they were all trained, they could make a difference. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying that, that we have enough. I mean, if it was up to me, everybody would be a gun owner who is of sound mind and age. But I think yes. currently we have enough gun owners in this country who if they all got the training and all went out of the mindset of I'm going to protect what's mine and maybe protect the next person, I think we, we wouldn't be able to make a difference. I think if half the gun owners, half the handgun, legal handgun owners in this country were 45% as proficient as JC, Hanka, me, yourself, the tables would turn real quick. Yeah. Really, really quickly. I think it, and I think that's kind of the aim of Southwest is, it's, I want to leave a legacy, and I know this sounds ridiculous, but I believe it can be done and I'm planning on doing it. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking about putting 30 grand of my own money a month back into training people. You know, I'm going to select few people every now and then. I'm going to book JC and, 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 and Heinke, and I'm going to get people dangerous. And when I say dangerous, I mean educatedly dangerous, okay? There's a difference between dangerous and being educatedly dangerous, okay? I'm educatedly violent man. Same as, you know, JC Heinker and that are. We're all very proficient. I want the country to be like that. And I believe in a 10, 15, 20 year span of however long Southwest Holsters is going to go on, as long as I'm earning money and I can put it back in... I can change the fundamentals of how people perceive training, mm. how people sit there and look at their gun and all of a sudden, rather than just seeing one or two guys doing what we do, this circle becomes a normality. Like in America, I follow hundreds of people. It's normal to get suited and booted and go throw lead down range yeah. in a very tactical, real world manner. It's normal now. Yeah. 15 years ago, that wasn't normal. So is it possible to change the perception on firearms and how people behave with firearms in South Africa? I believe yes. Is it going to take a lot of time? Yes. But can, by the time my daughter's 18, South Africa be a slightly safer place than it is now? I believe yes. And I believe that my company's success will also depend on whether or not I can provide and whether or not my company succeeds or not, I'm always going to share this value and I'm always going to be trying to help the community. Um, as I said, I didn't make this to make money because I enjoy tattooing. I miss tattooing, okay? I don't get to do it. I just don't. I didn't make this to make money. Yes, I'm lucky. It makes me money. The reason I made this is so I could do this more proficiently. Yeah. That's the fundamental of why Southwest Holes has started. James, my man, always a good chat. 
Move Thanks on. for this. I will edit the F out of this video and I'll let you know <laughs> as soon as it's up. But I mean, I think everything covered was like, was was questions people want answered, obviously, and all uh, uh, current to current affairs with what's happening in the country and with your company. So, mm. my man, thank you for the time. I will let you go. And I'll, I'll chat to you soon.